Um, if you look at our demography in Nigeria, um, starting from the number of Nigerians we have, we have um, about 193 million um, Nigerians, and of that population, half of them are women. Um, but sadly, you don't find the same representation in terms of financial services. You find that we have a lot more women who are financially um, excluded in the system. But that being said, um, some progress has been made. Um, at least between 2008 and 2000, 2008, 2016, we have included at, um, another additional 10% of women into financial services. So what is the case for you know serving women? What I can tell you is that um, of that population of women, what we have is that 50% of them are self-employed and are business owners. And if you look at the GDP of last year, um, at least for 2% of um, contributors to the GDP came from SMEs. And of that amount, and women played a, a, you know, a big role towards contributing. So if you're able to include a lot more women in the system, it's definitely economically more viable. And you'll be empowering women who then you know, automatically empower their societies because you find that a woman has a large ecosystem. Um, she's usually the one that controls, you know, um, the inflows and outflows in the home. So they say if you educate a woman, you've pretty much educated the entire society. There, so there is an economic um, business case. All right, so what's the women. approach of Diamond Bank? What's, mm -hmm. How are you looking at this? Is this a focus on entrepreneurs or mm -hmm. what? what's your... Okay. Game plan, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So for us in Diamond Bank, we are very passionate about women. We don't just talk the talk, but we actually walk the work. So we say that every woman is a diamond woman, um, but more importantly, we support you across all lines of um, um, all works of life for you. So, for example, in Diamond Bank, we anchor our proposition around um, women who are business, for example, uh, who are in business. So we look at supporting you all the way from the woman who is at the low end of the spectrum to the high end of the spectrum. So we have developed solutions and products to address this tier of women. So for example, for the low end woman, uh, low earning women, for example, we have a solution called Better Proposition, which is targeted at um, financially excluded women who are market women, um, mm. and we take the banking service solutions to them. Apart from that as well, Diamond Bank has a lot of initiatives that we run that um, is also targeted at women. One of which is, for example, the month of March. We know that March is generally celebrated, a day in March is celebrated as International Women's Month um, Day. But yeah. in Diamond Bank, we celebrate the entire month with women. So what we do is that we um, drive a campaign that is targeted at women. Um, so, for example, one of the um, initiatives that we've had in the past is to um, partner with CSR um, um, on some of our CSR initiatives, um, such as the Endo Walk. So we support um, you know, health-related issues that, are, um, that affect women. Yeah. Apart from that as well, we also um, have partnered to have a, a, an event called the Beauty Souk, where we provide a platform for entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs who are passionate in the you know, fashion and beauty industry to um, sort of come and showcase their wares. And it's an opportunity where we've connected people with markets and also allowed them to you know, become much more than they can actually be. All right. In this new digital banking age, I want to hear more about how you are focusing on, on women in that respect. Um, what has been the adoption of um, digital banking, so to speak, in this women banking arena? Okay, so again, you know, using um, digital platforms are very key, or are very key in terms of creating penetration. Because what you cannot do in terms of having brick and mortar um, branches, you can do in you know, in terms of using your digital solutions yeah. to um, penetrate um, markets. So for us in Diamond Bank, for example, we have leveraged quite heavily on our technology, such as our agency banking model, um, using mobile money to you know reach out to uh, women who are in society. So we what we do is that we um, enable them to become agents so that they can actually serve their communities. Apart from that, we also have a digital, um, it's called, it's an artificial intelligence um, platform called the ADA, the yeah. chat box. I don't know if you've heard about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We call her ADA Zainab, you know, Alabi. So she's, you know, um, she has the face of a woman. But the idea of that is that she has a customer interface. So she interacts with customers. You're able to, um, what you cannot access in a bank, so she's available 24 hours to deal with your needs. She's your go-to person to you know, attend to um, whatever needs you might have um, um, outside of banking hours. Um, there's so many things that we're doing. Also, we leverage quite heavily um, on our, our social media platforms to engage women. I was talking earlier to someone, and I read that um, social media is quite important if you want to reach um, a teeming population or a growing population of people who are emerging. So um, I talked about, you know, globally, um, Kylie Jenner. You know, we all know Kylie Jenner. She, for example, has leveraged her Instagram profile and was able to build a... Um, um, she was able to build a, a, an empire yeah. of over 900 million people. Oh, sorry, 900 million dollars in three years. 
in her fashion empire. So again, Diamond Bank, you know, uses all of these to ensure that we reach our target audience. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let, let's talk a bit about the, the experience you've had with uh, women entrepreneurs. Um, yesterday, I was speaking to a guest about inequality in Nigeria with respect to women uh, specifically. Um, can you give us a sense of your experience in terms of the typical woman entrepreneur? How, how prepared is she um, to, to do business in Nigeria? How does she compare with the um, regular, the, the, the another, a similar man in the same role? Okay. So what's interesting is that in creating a proposition for women, you have to obviously, the idea is that you're trying to solve a problem. So we have engaged and spoken to a lot of women, and the question has been, what is it that women want? And usually on top of that list, you find that you know there's a whole wish list of things that are, um, if you like, barriers to um, sort of progressing as entrepreneurs. And on top of that list, you find that women struggle with um, access to cheaper finance, um, even access to markets, um, access to information. So what I've found is that women are also a lot more risk averse compared right. to men. So um, you find that most businesses in Nigeria are unstructured and because they're unstructured sometimes you might struggle to access certain things but where you find a man having, if a bank requires a criteria of 10 things, he might just have three on that list but a woman might have maybe nine but because she doesn't have that additional one she probably would not be as bold to approach the institution so what i found with women is that women are generally a lot more risk averse and a lot more cautious mm. where, whereas a man is a lot more daring and will take that risk and go all out so what we try to do is when we when we when we um, engage our women we encourage them to you know be bolder we encourage them we also we, we also let them know that um, there are solutions that are available to them that's why we're deliberate about engaging women um, and inform them that um, you know knowledge is power and what you can access can you know make a world of difference to you